Oh my gosh, I love this thing. So this is exactly what I was trying to tell you. So check this out. Remind yourself of where we are. Here's the hypothalamus. You notice that this image actually has neurons in the hypothalamus, and the neurons are sending a message and then dumping chemical hormones into the bloodstream. And look at this little capillary bed right here. So you have hypothalamus dumping hormone into a capillary bed. Notice that then supernetted, which makes sense because it's like small so that you can dump in your hormone in a directed place. All the netted capillaries come together, and they travel through the infundibulum to anterior pituitary. And notice what you have here, a second capillary bed. So here's your first capillary bed, and here's your second capillary bed. At the first capillary bed, hypothalamus, hypothalamus dumps hormone. These are special hormones that are designed to uh, initiate the release of other hormones. They're controlling hormones. And they get dumped into the blood, into the portal system, into portal, into the portal, because that's really cool to have portals in your infundibulum. Those releasing hormones travel to ant pit. Guess how many releasing hormones there are? Six. There's six different releasing hormones that the hypothalamus can possibly dump into this portal system. Guess how many hormones ant pit can release into the rest of the blood supply. So here's capillary bed number one, capillary bed number two, um, to the body. So once Aunt Pitt dumps her hormones into the capillary bed, all that blood is going to head out to the body, and anybody with a receptor for the hormone is going to be affected. Guess how many hormones Aunt Pitt sends out into the body? Six. Does that work for you? Hypothalamus says, hormone number one, go to Aunt Pitt, do your thing. Aunt Pitt says, got the message, hypothalamus. Hormone number one, head on out and affect the body. Hypothalamus says, hormone number two, go down and tell Aunt Pitt to send out another hormone. Aunt Pitt gets the message, sends out hormone number two. There's a direct Relationship. There's one hormone in, for example, there's a growth hormone releasing hormone in the hypothalamus that sends a message to the ant pit to release growth hormone, which goes out and affects people. It's actually um, kind of lovely and allows for a significant amount of control. This is ant pit. Darn it, I have a picture of post pit. I'm going to have to show it to you on the next one because I didn't get it ready yet. But we can, we can, I'm going to draw post pit for you. I don't need this stinking picture to be done for me. Watch. Remember what we said post pit is doing? Look, I'm going to make my own neuron because ain't nobody going to stop me. Look at what's happening. Is this neuron synapsing with the, what's it called? capillary system, the portal system? No. This neuron is going rogue. It's going all the way into post pit. And the neuron itself is going to actually dump the hormone into the bloodstream. So let me add my own additional blood supply here. And there are only two hormones that are um, released by posterior pituitary, as opposed to six hormones being dealt with by anterior pituitary. Posterior pituitary, nervous system, n nervous tissue. Anterior pituitary, endocrine tissue, glandular tissue. 
I'm not going to make you remember all the hormones, but if you want to remember them, you'll be ahead in physio. Okay, let's talk about now some specific glands that um, are elsewhere. Hypothalamus and ant pit are kind of controlling the scene. Post pit does a little action as well, but there's lots of other endocrine glands that we can uh, talk about.